were so good in the early days. This is just the essence of it. And you went bad in the latter days. Those earlier days won't be mentioned. Then he said, well, if you had bad crops in the yesteryears, but then you begin to do the right thing in the early later years. Those formative years, we won't even talk about it. Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you here on that? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, I, I, I want to I wanna give you a chance. To, uh, if any, I just would maybe one or two testimonies tonight if you got one. If you don't, if you don't, don't make up money. You don't make up any. Don't make up something. No, no. Okay, you go ahead, brother. Give us your testimony. Give us your testimony. Give us your testimony. I've never seen God work so much in my life. All right. It's like incredible. It's like something that's impossible. But we all know that ain't nothing impossible for God. That's right. I'm like, I just went from dark to the daylight. <laughs> He's like through that. Your, through your preaching, through the deacons, through the brothers. I, I can't get it. I, I don't understand it. I'm like, God, why are you doing this for me? Why are you doing this? You told me, God, if I just let go and let you, that you would do. But you're showing me. And I'm telling everybody that's in here. I might sound crazy, but God is real. He's real. Hallelujah. Yeah. I've been asking God, and he's been doing it. And I'm like, what, Lord, what is going on? No matter what I do, no matter how I do it, no matter what. And I'm like, God, I'm, I'm, I'm not worthy. But God said, you don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. You don't know the Father you serve. Man, I fought to get here tonight. I fought to get here tonight. Dad, would you tell me, don't you come here? Don't you go to that church? Don't you go to that church? Brothers, my brothers, my brother Shaw, my brother Orlando, you, God opened this door for me. I still don't get it. I still don't get it. Yeah. But it's so much love. Stick around. No matter what I go through, no matter what I do wrong, God said, ain't nothing you can do that I already didn't know you were going to do. Get you behind up and let's go. All right. God is good. God is good. God is good. Yes, he is. I don't know how to say it. Y'all might look at me and think I'm crazy. But I'm don't worry you, about it. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God is good. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I can't get it. I can't get it. But he's good. Yeah. He's good. Hey. He's good. Yeah. He's good. Yeah. He's real. Hallelujah. This ain't no joke. This is not a game. We not playing a game. No. God is real. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm going all night. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. All right. I promise you, this is not a joke. It's not a game. God is real. Gotcha. He's gotcha. real. We got gotcha. you. And he's here. He's here. Got you, got your bag. All right. We got your back. We got your back. I got your back. Go for it. Got you. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. One more, we got, we got another one more. Got no, no, you're fine. You don't, you're fine. I got you. I got
Amen. God does have a word for us here tonight. He does have a word. And I, I want to I just, I wanna just, um, just share with you. I know that, uh, you know, it, it, we, this is, everything's kind of out of culture, but I don't care. I mean, people are there. Well, you going to have service? Yes. If you say, well, you're going to have a party, you really wouldn't cancel your party. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you sure wouldn't. You know. So no, 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 I don't care what, I don't care what they fall on. You know, so we, uh, we're going to have service tomorrow morning. Oh, 900 hours. Yeah. Praise God. This Today is the 31st of December, 2022, and we have, I have seen a lot of years come and go, and it's interesting, the life experience that I've had is amazing, and uh, I, am, I am more grateful and more thankful, and more, I have a greater understanding <clears throat> than I've ever in my life. And, uh, but the, this wonderful, the life of God that he has given to us and, and has set us on, a, 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 on our way. And, and, and it's, oh, it's so interesting. Uh, God's been really speaking some things to me about how he has placed every member in the body as it pleases him and each of us are members of his body. And I'm, I'm not talking about this local church. I'm not even talking about New Jersey. I'm talking about the globe. The body of Christ in the earth. Every born a new person is a member of that body. And you have a part to play. And you, the body, without you is incomplete. As if you did not have a finger or a toe. Oh, you could hobble along, but it would be better off, you'd be better to have your toe back. And over, you read over in the book of First Corinthians, and God talks about the members of the body in comparison to the members of a human body. And so you understand the members of a human body. And he talked about the quality and the value of each body, each member. And each member is valuable. So I want you to start to rethink. I want you to, because I, I, don't, want you to, I don't want you to stay the same. I, I, I want you to grow. And God wants you to grow. But if you don't, if you don't put yourself in growth mode, you 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 won't grow. You ha you have to you have to. Growth is is automatic as a result of feeding. You, you don't know what you're going to be like next year this time, because you've never been there. But you're going to grow. You're going to be different next year this time. You're going to know things next year this time that you don't know now. So look at, look, at, look at this as we come to the close of this year. Look at it as, as closing a chapter of your life. And so you can, you can consider your age to be a chapter, each year to be a chapter. And so you close the chapter of your life for this year. And tomorrow we'll start a new chapter. But each chapter should get more interesting and more interesting as we go. And uh, now there is a passage of scripture that really alludes to this. It's over in Second Second uh, Second Corinthians, and the third chapter, and it alludes to what I'm uh, chapter three of Second Corinthians, beginning at the first verse says, do we begin again to commend ourselves or do we need as some other epistle or commendation to you or letters of commendation from you? Now listen to verse 2. You are 
our, you are our epistle. You, you know what an epistle is? That's a letter. You know what letters are? Those are those things you write and put them in an envelope and mail them. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. That's interesting. We are epistles, but we're read by everyone. So what is he saying there? He is saying your lifestyle is an epistle. How do people respond when they read you? When people see you, what do they remember? Or do they remember? What are people seeing when they read you? What are they reading? Clearly, verse 3 says, clearly you are an epistle. So there's no question about this. I'm not making this up. Clearly you are an epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of the living God. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of flesh that is of the heart. The heart, the heart is an expression of you. When people see you, they see your heart. They, your heart is exposed when they see you. What are people seeing when they see you? What kind of an impact are you having? Now, here's the good part about this. If this has all been negative in previous years, well, we're fixing to close the chapter of this past year, and we're going to start a new chapter tomorrow. And so it's, if you don't like what, you read, what people read last year, then let's make sure that they read something different. And I'm not talking about no New Year's resolution because they don't last until about 10 o'clock, about 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and then they're just done. That's it. So we're not, we're not talking about that. that that's, that's flesh stuff. But we're talking about an epistle of Jesus Christ. We're talking about when people see you, they should be seeing Jesus. Amen. See, it's wonderful to tell people, well, I'm a Christian. That's good. I'm good you tell them that. But I'd whole lot rather to see whether you're one or not rather than you tell me you want. What are people reading? What are they seeing when they see you? And so why, do, why, so why do we want to do a renovation? Why do, we want to, why do we want to do an evaluation? Here's why we need to do an evaluation on what people have been reading because we determine the building and the expanding of the kingdom of God. We determine the advancement of the kingdom. Now, Isaiah writing about Jesus prior to his coming, he said of his government and of the peace of Jesus' government, it's not going to be an end to that. It's going to just keep expanding of the increase of his government. There shall be what? No end. How is that going to be? It's going to be through your and my operations on this earth. You are just as important as any member of the body at any geographical location on this globe. Don't let no devil sell you short and tell you that you don't amount to anything. In fact, you know that is one of the major tricks of the devil. That is usually the bullet that caused people to jump off the bridge is the fact that they don't amount to anything. You are a nobody. Don't let the devil sell you that one. Amen. You are a somebody and you are just as valuable as any other member that's in the body. I don't care where he or she is. Jesus, go back and read the 12th chapter of, of 1 Corinthians. Jesus talks about the value, the members of the body 
and how the members that doesn't seem to be too important, how important they are and how they're given credence. But listen to me, listen to me. As you close the chapter, now I don't know how last year's, I don't know how last year's chapter went in your life. You know better than anybody. But we're closing the, we're closing the chapter on last year. We're starting a new chapter tomorrow. What's going to be recorded? What are people going to see? What kind of life are you going to be living next year? The one, the new chapter is coming. And, and so understand the necessity and, the, and the, how important. Now, listen to me. The words of God is going to produce what it says. God said, my word that go forth out of my mouth will not return void. It will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the thing that I send. It's going to produce exactly what it says. You want to be in on that, and you are part of that. You are a part of the fulfillment of God's words that's been released on this planet. You are a part of the fulfillment of those words. And I know those words are going to be fulfilled because God is the one that released those words. Now, as we go into, as we open a new chapter, let me say this to you. It has nothing to do with how smart you are or your abilities. It has to do with the power of God's word and you being a member of Christ's body. You are never spoken of independent of Jesus. You are always identified as being in Christ. Amen. You can't fail. Amen. The only way you can fail is intentionally you can fail. But you just can't fail. Amen. You got to say, I'm not going to pass. I don't want to pass. I want to go back and play with the devil. You, you have to do that in order to fail. Now, if you insist on going back, with the, the, the door is open. I don't recommend it. But, but my point is because I know the trick of the devil is to diffuse people and to derail people by making them think that they're insignificant and that you don't know enough and that God don't even really know you. He don't even know your last name. But if you are in Christ... Your name is written in heaven exactly where your citizenship is now. And heaven knows you. If you know Jesus, heaven know you. I can assure you of that. If you know Jesus, heaven know you. And so as we, as we understand these basic principles, as we come to the close of this year, and then we have a mindset for launching into the new era. And here's a, a text here, Philippians chapter 3, to bear in mind as you start to get ready to move forward and advance the kingdom of God in the coming chapter of your life. Verse 12 from the third chapter of Philippians, I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. I'm reading this from the NLT. But I press on. I don't, I like this because, <laughs> no, I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm pressing. I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus has possessed me. First possessed me. 
No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing. Yeah. Now, now, stop right there. This is one thing. As you close the chapter of 2022 and as you make your heading for 2023, there's one thing that you want to do, and I'm giving this to you from God, so these are his words, so they are certainly good words for you to use. I focus on this, <coughs> what? One thing. Yeah. What is the one thing that I focus on? Woo, glory to God. The devil keep more people in a tailspin over yesterday than anything else I know of. Christians, good Christians, are depressed and in a tailspin over yesterday. And there's the only thing you can do with yesterday is to forget. It, there it is right there. I'm, I'm giving you that. This is the word of God. Forgetting the past. But I focus on this. Oh, I love it. On this what? One thing. What? What is that one thing? Forgetting the past. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? This is from the heart of Father. I'm talking about the creator yeah. of the universe. He is so big you can't even see him. He says, Owen, only thing I want you to do, I want you to just forget yesterday. So that's why I don't have no sin. Now you might get mad about that and fuss, <laughs> but you, 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 you'll get it eventually. Well, I'll tell you what, if the Bible tells me that the best thing I can do is to do one thing, is forget yesterday. And if I say I got some sin, when did you do the sin? Well, last week, last day, or last year. Well, then you didn't do what God told you to do. Yeah. Now you still, you may be, may, now maybe you missed it because you didn't do what God told you to do. He said forget it and you're still remembering it. Isn't that, an, is that in our favor of what? Come on, look at the analyze that. You say, but, 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 but you don't know what I did. I don't even care. And nobody else does. Nobody else cares. God doesn't care. Most people that's begging and hollering and begging God and letting the devil beat them up over yesterday is all by themselves. Yeah. Ain't nobody up with them. God don't hear that because he has already said he's not going to remember that. Amen. He already told you his sins, his sins, and he's removed your sins far from you as he sins from the West. I don't know why you don't read the Bible. <laughs> but that's what he said. Yeah. And he said, I'm telling you, the best thing you can do is to forget yesterday. Yeah. That's the one thing I want you to focus on. Yes, I'm glad this is written in the scripture because if you do things that he's that preacher going to preach in heresy. No, no, I'm just reading. Did you know you don't really need to preach? Or you knew you just stand and read the Bible. That's all you need to do. You can, you can just read the Bible. You know, read the Bible. You, you can get this just reading the Bible. That's all I'm doing, reading it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Whoo-wee. I'm so excited. I'm just looking forward to who God wants me to touch next year. That's all I'm looking forward to. I don't know who's going to be, but somebody's going to get blessed through this board next year. Somebody's going to get blessed through me. I know that because I don't forget yesterday, so I have no problem. My slate's clean. I don't know about yesterday. Don't be telling me what you did. Don't, don't, don't tell me. Because I don't know. I forgot about it. God forgot it. I don't know. I, and there's no record of it. Amen. The only one who might have a record is the devil, and he don't even count. But if we could pick up this principle. And I, this is real. This is real. Now, listen. Let me, let, let me say this. <clears throat> you are not going to skate through this. And let me just be straight with you. <laughs> I have to tell you the truth. You are not going to just skate through this and just hang in there. You know, because, you know, there are people that skate. There are skaters in church, you know. They ain't religious in Jesus. 
Now, now, this all that, that, don't even, this, this, well, who he talking, none of your business. They ain't talking about nobody. <laughs> no, really, because that's what people, that, no, I don't have a human mind. I got one. But what I'm saying to you, if you've been just skating and just, you know, go to church because you're not supposed to go or, or, or something like that, um, uh, you, this is a good verse for you. This is a good message for you. What are you, you're closing out this year. If you've been skating, if you've just been skating, you know, the only reason you go is because it's Sunday. And you wouldn't even do that if, you know, if nobody didn't notice it. If you've been skating, then don't worry about it. But don't worry about it. That's, no, that's not against you. Did you get that? Amen. Even if you have been skating, it's not against you. Amen. I can prove that. Watch this. Watch this. What did the scripture say? But I focus on this one thing. What? Forgetting the past. Well, I was skating last year. Forget it. Forget it. I was just I was just playing a game last year. Forget it. Forget it. Do you see how good this is? Forget it. And look forward and let's start a new chapter this year. Now watch this. This new chapter does not require no smart person. All it requires is your will. That's all it requires. Listen to me. Listen to me real good. If you are a skater, and I have to look straight ahead when I say this because I don't want to look at nobody. <laughs> if you are a skater, forget about your past skating. And just when you open the page to head your new chapter for 2023, you tell Jesus, I don't want to skate no more. I don't want to skate no more. I want to, I want to be productive. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. Don't tell him you can't talk. Don't tell him you can't win. Don't tell him any of that. He knows more than you know about it. Don't tell him anything else. The only thing you tell him is that I don't want to be, I don't want to just skate anymore. I really want to be productive and I want to be effective in the body. That's all you got to do. And what he will do, he will develop in you and he will change in you what you could not change. You, you can't change. See, you can't change being ashamed of Jesus. See, if somebody said, so, 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 Come and lead us in prayer, and you can't part your lips. Well, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. You can't change that. But when you say yes to Jesus, he can work in you, and if you let him continue to work in you, after a while, ain't nobody going to have to say to you, lead us in prayer. You will jump up and just do it. Because the change came from prayer. Ah, ah, that's what I want you to see. I think many people are failing and are still backsliding because they think they got to do something. <laughs> you don't have to do it. You, can't, you don't know what to do anyway. You've never been one of them, never been a Christian before, so you don't know what to do. But when you say to him, I don't want to be like that anymore. Now, this is private. Don't tell, you don't have to tell nobody else. This is between you and Jesus. You tell him, I don't want to be like that anymore. I really want to be productive in this new upcoming year. And that's all you got to that's all you got to do. And I'll guarantee you, he will work in you so smooth and so gentle. You will be doing what you're supposed to do, and you won't even know it. You're going to catch yourself doing stuff and say, who is that? That ain't me. See, I, I listen. I know what it's like being ashamed. I remember, and this was many years ago. I remember the very first time. You might think this is a joke, but it's not. This is the truth. I remember the first time I said amen out loud in church. I remember that. I remember because I jumped. I didn't, I, it scared me. I'm like, whoa. 
because that was, you know, it was just something new. It was something that had never come out of me. I was always just set up there, set up there and looking around, you know, like the rest of the kids, you know. But I remember the first time. But you know what? After that first time, the second time was easy. And now watch this. Nobody even paid me any attention. I'm the, I'm, I'm the only one that paid me some attention. They wouldn't say anything about what I'm saying. But the devil had me going like this. But, but I, I say that to help to show you how smooth and how gentle Jesus will treat you when you make the right choice. It'll be so easy. You'll be doing what you've been called to do, and it's going to be so easy, and so it's going, it's going to be amazing. That's how he grow you in the grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we will set out to do this, as we go into open this new chapter of, 19, of 20. 23, make a decision in your heart. You just make the decision. You don't have to talk to me. You don't have to, you don't have to come to the altar. You don't have to call me in a little special session. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to tell nobody. If you, if you're married, you don't have to tell your husband. If you, if you, if you, if you, if you, don't, have to, you don't have to tell your wife. You don't have to tell your sibling. You don't have to tell your mama. You don't have to tell, you, you don't have to tell nobody. They'll find out soon enough. You don't have to tell them. You don't have to tell them. They'll find out, you know. But Jesus, he is so intimate with you, and he is so gentle with you. And when you come to him, when you come to him with that intimate, that, 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 that childlike attitude, when you come to him like that, and you confide in him, and you just let him know, I, I really, I want to do this, and I just, I just can't, I'm ashamed, and all of this, but he knows that. But he'll, he'll qualify you to turn a new leaf and 2023 20, is going to be a year like you have never experienced because the first thing is going to happen, you're going to forget the past and you're going to look forward to what lies ahead. And you're going to press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Jesus Christ, is calling us. That's the bottom line. That's the whole thing in a nutshell, is us being a member of God's family, loving people. Now, now that's another, that's another whole area that, that he's gonna teach, Jesus is going to teach you about this love thing because I know, I guarantee you, there's everybody in this room got somebody they just didn't soon meet. Don't worry about that. Don't, don't worry about that. He'll take care of all of that. He'll take care of but, but loving people is not, is not optional. I'm going to tell you that right up front. Loving people is not optional, but allow him to love through you. You got to allow Jesus to do that. But, but you're not going to just say, you know, I'm not going to put up with so-and-so. You just can't. Do, no, you're not going to do that. You're not going to go against the grain like that. I'll tell you that right up now. If you, you, just, if you think you're going to hang with Jesus and just be mean to people, and, and no, 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 I'm telling you that ain't going to work. I, I just, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate to tell you. I'm, I'm glad to tell you because it's not going to work. You, you can't do that. You cannot not love people and hang out with Jesus. Because if Jesus loves them people that you don't like, he loves them. So, so if you want to talk to Jesus and he's talking to them and you can't get into the conversation because you're afraid you may have to talk to them, you're going to, no, see, that ain't going to work. But I'm telling you, make a decision. Now, here again, this is not a decision that you make based on how you feel. You just make a decision, I receive the love commandment and I will love everybody. You can say that without feeling it. Make a decision to love everybody and then walk it out and watch God transform you. And I guarantee you tonight, 2023, you're going to be a new person. You're going to, be, you're going to stand up and testify. You say, you're going to, last year, I, man, I had it going on, but I'm a new person. Go ahead and stand in your feet. I want everybody to come to the altar. I want everybody to come to the altar, gather around the altar.
Yeah, we're going we're gonna to pray out, we're going to pray out, and we're going to go home, and then we're going to be prepared to come back. Everybody, everybody come to the altar. Everybody come down, flow down, walk down, walk down, come down. Glory to God. Give us a little praying music there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Gather around the altar. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2023 is 2022 is going out, and we are praying in 2023. It's been a good year for me. It's been a, it's been a good year. It's been a good year. We don't, we don't bite. We don't bite. Holy Ghost don't bite. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. This is, this is, this is family. This is family. This is, this is, this is family. This is family. We are the children of God. Jesus loves you. I'm telling you, he loves you. He gave his life. He gave his life for you. And I'm, I, I am so glad. I'm, I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not. Because the best, the worst you could do to me is kill me. And if you do that, shucks, I beat you in. <laughs> not really. I'm not a, I'm not a, how did I get like that? How do you get to the point where you're not afraid of anything? Jesus. All I want to do, all I want to do is to love people. That's all I want to do. I'm not interested in your faults. I don't, don't tell me, don't, don't tell me what some, don't come tell me about nobody what somebody did. I don't care. If you got a, a bone to ax the ground with somebody, you go grind it by yourself. Don't bring it to me. No, because you got to love, you got to have love these people. You got to love everybody. And I cannot overemphasize that. The Bible said the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You should love your neighbor as yourself. And I'm telling you, if there has been one key in my life, one thing in my life that I have learned, is to learn to love people. I've learned to love people. God taught me. He taught me to love people unconditionally. I don't care, don't say, I don't care what you're doing. What you're doing does not determine whether I love you or not. Your lifestyle does not determine whether I love you or not. I choose to love you with the same love that God so loved the world with that he gave his only begotten son. I'm telling you, that is the key to this life. Is learning to love people. And if you can't find it, now, you know, some of us, you know, we, 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 we're so used to, to bad-mouthing people and so used to wagging our tongues, you know, we're going to have to work on that. But God, will, he'll work it out of you. He'll work it out of you. You know, and if you find yourself talking about somebody and, and catch yourself doing it, just shut up. Now, now, if you're talking to me and start talking about someone, you're going to find out quick. Because you're going to be signed up. You're going to find out by yourself because I'm gone. I'm not going to sit there and listen to you. I, be, I really am not. And in fact, if you want me to get quiet, start talking about somebody else. And I bet you I don't add nothing to that conversation until you quit that. But we have to learn. This is something that we have to train ourselves to do. do not, I mean, you know, even, 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 even what we call innocent gossip. You got to quit that. If you're not saying something nice about them, then don't say anything. And then sometimes we feel justified because, well, they really did it. Well, so what? Okay, tell me what you did. And you don't say a word. You see what I mean? But don't you see how, how walking in love is a, is a God thing? Jesus is hanging on the cross. And we have crucified him. And the last thing he does is pray for us. He says, Father, forgive them. Yes, those that are crucifying me, I want you to forgive them. Dear God, where do you get that from? Come from God. You're not justified to talk about people just because they mistreated you. That doesn't justify you to talk about them. That doesn't justify you to put them on blast. That doesn't justify you to string their name across Facebook and tell other people about them. That because even if they really did it, do, do not qualify. You do not qualify to do that. You can't do that. 
You ever hear the old term? It's a military term. Suck it up. As you start practicing this, you're going to find it's going to get easier. It's going to get easier. And, when you, and the more you love people, the, the higher quality of your life you're going to live. The quality of your life is going to start to elevate. As the love of Christ increase in your life, the quality of God's love and the quality of your everyday life is going to go up. And there's no cap to that. He will increase you more and more. The scripture says that when you develop and begin to walk in this level of love that God's calling us to walk in. And so, Father, as we come to the close of this year, we are so thankful and so grateful for how you have cared for us and how you have loved us with a love that's gone beyond the human mind. And you have commissioned us to go love one another the same way you have loved us. As we close the chapter of 2022, as we write the heading for the new chapter of 2023, I want love to be laid across the top. L-O-V-E, the love of God, we must do. And as we move through this new year, Lord, the expansion and the increase and advancement of your kingdom is upon us. There are those that are out in the dark. They are coming to the light. We bless you tonight. Now I pray for every family. I pray for every person that's represented in this room here. I pray, I pray for our law enforcement that's present. God, that they be protected. No harm, harm will come upon them because they are called by you to serve the people. I thank you for this, Father. And we move forward into this new year, putting our confidence and trust in Jesus Christ to guide us and to keep us. And there are many that will come to know Jesus in the year to come. And you'll be glorified in it all. And it's all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you. Happy New Year to all of you. We'll see your smiling faces tomorrow morning at 0900 hours. God bless you. I love you. God bless you.